want us to begin by reading John chapter 8, verses 31 to 32. This is where Jesus says, you know the truth. Here we go. Jesus then said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Now, I could be set you free as well, so I just so you know that. We also looked at these uh, Proverbs 29, 18 last week because that has to do with the revelatory vision that is prophetic for each of us. I like for I got four different versions here. I'd like us to read them together. Here we go. Where there is no prophecy, the people cast off restraint. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Where there is ignorance of God, the people run wild. Now those four versions are the same words in the Hebrew and uh, we talked about them last week in terms of prophetic vision. And the truth is that where it says cast off restraint or people perish, it actually is the word for being naked. The truth can set you free, but if you really want the truth, it'll probably be painful and demand something from you. In the movie The uh, Matrix, which I ended with a scene last week, there's a scene in which Neo is offered the truth by Morpheus. And it is the truth about reality and the illusion that people live in in terms of the matrix. And it really tells us a little bit about the illusion that some of us live in in this world. And I'd like to show you that uh, clip again. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice. Tumbling down the rabbit hole, hmm? You could say that. I can see it in your eyes. You have the look of a man who accepts what he sees because he is expecting to wake up. Ironically, this is not far from the truth. Do you believe in fate, Neil? No. Why not? Because I don't like the idea that I'm not in control of my life. I know exactly what you mean. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Matrix. Do you want to know what it is? The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch, a prison for your mind. <sighs> Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes.
Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So today we look down the rabbit hole, we explore the truth, and like Morpheus said, you have to see it for yourself. <clears throat> All I can do is point the way. <clears throat> like the proverb says here, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no prophetic revelation, the people remain naked. <clears throat> These messages aren't going to be flashy or crowd pleasers or entertainment. I can only offer you the truth. Like Morpheus said, you can take the blue pill and you can go back to living your life and you can live and believe anything you want to believe about yourself, about the world, about God. But if you take the red pill, I will show you the depth of the truth. And like Morpheus said, remember, all I'm offering is the truth. So let's begin with the world in us and around us today. <clears throat> the first truth is that we live in a fundamental paradox. Every last one of us has this within us. <clears throat> that paradox is this. We want to know the truth about ourselves, and we want very much not to know the truth about ourselves. We want self-awareness, and we, yet we resist that kind of awareness about the reality of who we really are. And first there is our physical nature, getting on the scales. We can see the facts of our glory. Those extra pounds are the facts. A scale is hard to finesse because the facts reveal the truth to us. We try, though, and many people approach a scale with extreme caution. And dare I say the truth, you ladies are more aware of this, uh, this truth sayer than most men. But scales have a way of telling us the truth about the condition of our bodies. We avoid it. We take off our shoes before we get on it. If we're home, we get naked, don't we? And we suck it in as if that will somehow lighten the load. We also won't get on except at a certain time, mainly in the morning, which is before we've eaten anything and after we've gone to the bathroom. I'm telling you the truth, aren't I? Scales tell us facts that may reveal the truth about our physical condition. If the scales give us the facts and reveal truth, but we deny it because we can't handle the truth, then there's always the mirrors. You know, I have, I have actually known a few people who don't want to have mirrors in their homes. And it isn't because they're vampires. But they don't want to see themselves in the mirror because it reveals to them the truth. And they don't want that truth. So they take the blue pill. But we try to finesse mirrors as well as scales. Clothing stores have people try on clothes in front of mirrors where the lighting is set in such a way so that customers can't see the blemishes or the wrinkles as well. The goal is to convince them that the clothes have smoothed their complexion and taken years off their appearance. In fact, the clothes are designed to conceal our extra weight, our extra years, and our less than perfect appearance. We find ways to hide the truth when it comes to our clothes. We change the words used to describe our clothes. I just love relaxed fit jeans. The fabric is so relaxed that it can be worn by someone two or three sizes larger than the one that's printed on the label. And we take the blue pill. And we live the illusion. We finesse mirrors with makeup and hair color and lighting and clothes that cover up the truth. 
scales and mirrors. They are tools of accountability. They tell us about reality, and we can try to outsmart them if we want the illusion. But if we allow them to, they will reveal the truth. I dare say some of you got up this morning, at least I did, and looked in the mirror and said, this is going to take some work. <laughs> this is just the outer world, the environment that we live in, the matrix, you might say, the world, the matrix of our world. We so often deny the reality of who we are physically and chronologically. We take the blue pill because we don't want to know the truth, because the truth hurts. And the words of Jesus echo in our minds. If you know the truth, it will set you free. And if you think about his words, they imply that we are in prison. In prison to our illusions of age and looks and physical conditions. Knowing the truth can set you free to correct that which can be corrected and to live with the age you carry. This is just our physical world and the illusion that comes with it. What about our inner worlds? Where we think and live, right here between your ears. This is where we really need truth sayers to speak to our inner selves, spiritual truth sayers that show us the mirror of ourselves and speak to our spiritual condition. <laughs> now, community is the place or a place where we find truth sayers who will put us on the scales and show us a mirror of ourselves. Have you ever had somebody tell you the truth and you really wanted to deny it, but you know it's the truth when they said it to you and it becomes hurtful? Community. Community is people around us that we are in relationship with. It can be family, it can be friends, it can be co-workers, it can be church. In fact, it should be church as well. One of the aspects of my ministry is to be a truth-sayer to you. I don't know how many times people have told me that it seems like I'm talking directly to them, and I usually respond, well, at least I didn't call your name. But the truth is, I'm usually speaking to myself. And you're just listening. That's how I know I'm looking in your window. Community. Church is one of those communities that we live in. You and I live in communities. And since we have the great banquet here, and uh, one of the follow-up purposes is to get people in the small prayer and share groups, which we call reunion groups. And those of you who are in reunion groups, you can pay attention to this. Those reunion groups, if they work right, they keep us accountable, they give us support as we journey through life. Those groups are truth sayers if they are real. I know this, every one of us needs a few people to tell us the truth about our hearts and souls and the ways that we are living our lives. People who don't think they need others they're lying to themselves, and basically they don't want anyone to tell them the truth at times. They want to take that blue pill, or they want to live their life the way they want to live it. We all have weak spots. We all have blind spots in our lives that we cannot navigate on our own if we're truthful. We need people to remind us of our deepest thoughts and values, and to warn us if we're getting off road with our lives. And we can do that pretty easily. We need someone to help us question our motives and examine our consciences. We need someone to perform spiritual surgery on us when our hearts get hard and our vision gets dim. We need a few truth sayers around us. All of us need it to help us get our heads on straight and get our hearts right. Otherwise, we end up taking the blue pill, and we can live and believe anything that we want to believe about ourselves, about our world, about God. We need truth-sayers. 
We need truthsayers because our capacity to live in denial is astounding at times. Self-deception is that mysterious ability to pull the wool over our own eyes. And buddy, we're good at it. We deny, we suppress, we minimize what we know to be true, and then we elevate and we magnify what we know to be false, but that's where we want to live. There's a whole field in psychology based on our endless ability to justify what we say and do that is consistent with our own self-image. We are like the man on a diet who drove past the bakery and said he would only stop for donuts if there was an available parking space in front of it and clearly indicating that that was going to be God's will for him that he should eat a donut. So after about the sixth time around, he found one. Many of us have never invited somebody to be a truth sayer in our lives. For the same reason that we don't want to get on a scale or that we don't want to look in the mirror. We are afraid of what we might find out. What if the truth about me is so painful I won't really be able to handle it, just kind of like Jack Nicholson in A Few Good Men when he says, you can't handle the truth. And what if we think, you know, it's at times like that that we have to decide, who are we going to listen to? Are you going to listen to Jack Nicholson or are you going to listen to Jesus who said, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. A person who rejects truth from another person because of pride and se- or self cannot tell anyone else the truth. And the reason is fear of rejection and pain and self-deceived people. Self-deceived people will always become flatterers and slanderers of other Christians in community because, and they can't make good judgments because they can't see it. At times, we need to have words of admonition and reproach. They need to be risked at times. When sin is apparent, an admonition is imperative. In the community of faith, the church, truth is needed because God's word demands it, and we need to hear the truth. We need others to help us live up to our best intentions and our deepest values. So let me give you a word of truth about people and relationships. Those of you who write things down, this might be that time. The world seems to tell us that it's easy to tell the truth when you don't love anybody. The world seems to tell us that you can tell the truth when you don't love anybody. Well, here is what I think is real truth. I think you can't possibly know the truth about someone unless you love them. Because you don't care, therefore you don't follow around, or you don't know what, they're, what they're, makes them up. You may know facts about them, but you don't know them. You don't know the truth. Jesus told us to love our enemies. Now, when you think about that, that's not going to be an easy thing to do. Read with me Matthew 5, 43 to 44. Here we go. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now, there's a paradox in this. This is truth. Let me tell you, tell you what I think it means. Understand that most truth can only be expressed in circular paradoxes. And this is where I get that dog whistle look from some of you. Where you go, what? When you, when you really know somebody or someone, you can't hate them. Or maybe it's just that you can't really know them until you stop hating them. You can't really know someone until you stop hating them. You can't possibly know the truth about your enemy 
unless you love them, and that requires seeing them through the eyes of God, and that means that's got to be worked in you by God. That's why Jesus said, he said, love your enemies, but in verse 45, read it with me. He finished it. He said, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. In other words, God sees us better than we see ourselves. He knows the truth. And until you can see the truth by loving your enemies about them. So the paradox is this. You can't possibly know the truth about your enemies. Your friends even, for that matter. Or anybody. Unless you love them. Because when you love them, you'll care enough to look into their lives. Loving them gives you understanding and insight into why they do the things they do and why they are the way they are. That's why Jesus said, love your enemies. You can't really know your enemy until you stop hating. And you can't know the truth about your enemy Unless you love them. In this world, science refuses to admit any cause except first cause. And what that means is if, if you knock down one domino, then the one next to it is going to fall as well and so forth down the line. That's why science thinks this is all an accident that we live here and that we're here. There's no divine involvement in this world at all. You and I are just an accident caused by the first cause, which is described as the Big Bang. And we are the way we are because of our place in this line of dominoes. But the truth is more than facts. The truth is more than facts. The truth about life and us is that the type of cause that truly matters is final cause, not first cause. That is the purpose of you, the purpose of life, the purpose of this world, the purpose of things. The truth about a person is what that person had in mind when they began and how they end up. Once you understand what people really want, you can't hate them anymore because now you can fear them, because some of them are worth being afraid of, but you can't hate them because you can always find the same desires in your own heart. Loving your enemies gives you understanding into why they are the way they are and why they do or have done the things that they have done. Then you will begin to know the truth and not just the fact. One side note to all this, knowing the truth about your enemies is also how you defeat them. But the bottom line is this. You can't really know the truth about someone unless you love them. Organizations like Weight Watchers and Alcoholics Anonymous, they are carefully structured around this basic truth that I'm telling you right now that most people can't even understand that this is the truth. You can't really know someone unless you love them. And in Alcoholics Anonymous, the people who are caring for the new ones that are coming in, they know. And they also love. They know the truth about people because they love them. If you love someone, you pay attention to them and everything about them, and you see beyond the facts. They know that for people to think that they can live up to their best intentions on their own is a recipe for disaster. These groups are made up of people who have faced up to the fact that they're not normal and they're committed to help one another live one day at a time. You know why we like the Seinfeld show and, and cheers and friends, and the one I like right now is the Big Bang Theory. In all these programs, the people are not normal. <laughs> are they? They're people with human limitations and sometimes unique strangeness. 
and weird, some of them. And they live in community together. They help each other to ensure responsibility. They live in community with one another. They love each other. Because of that love, they know the truth about each other. By the way, we as a church have been described as you people just aren't normal. And that's probably true. We have a unique strangeness about us. So we're not. But we're also people with limitations. Human limitations and unique strangeness. And, well, we can be weird. Once again, the truth is present. You can't really know the truth about someone unless you love them. When John Wesley was bringing people together to form churches, small Christian communities, they developed relationships with one another to help each other to be accountable in values and principles and decisions, and they're also to support one another. And Wesley coined this phrase to define the relationship. He called it watching over one another in love. Watching over one another in love. We do the same. You know, the Great Banquet helps us set people up in small groups, reunion groups is what we call them, so that they can watch over one another in love. That's what we do as a church as well, or that's what we strive to be as a church as well. The problem is that over time we can shallow out. The accountability part of our relationship, which has to do with truth sayers, kind of gets lost at times. Churches, reunion groups, other parts of the body of Christ tend to shift focus from accountability to some kind of vague sharing. Churches lose their power because truth-telling gets lost, because churches tend to drift away from the truth. And we could do the same. The problem with truth is that it will personally challenge us. And you know as well as I know that we, we tend to avoid challenge, do we not? We get lazy. We shallow out. Human nature tends to avoid grace and truth because it will bring about change in our lives and change hurts. Occasionally... People in churches or people who come around churches show up who just love to go around correcting people. They are quick to point out our faults and failings, which God knows there's plenty of those in terms of this. I mean, I take tours in people's lives. I know we got faults and failings. without, And they come in, though, and they give us all the criticism without seeing anything good. They believe their gift is to be Savior. And they come in and they speak the truth recreationally, but they do it without love. And they'll fire off and pass judgment in a spirit of some kind of arrogant superiority, which they cover up by saying, well, I'm just a prophet. I can't help it. Well, I know this truth. There's a very significant theological distinction between being a prophet and being a jerk. What burns deeply in the heart of a true prophet is not just judgmental anger, but also a deep abiding love. To hold others accountable does not mean we get to put ourselves in charge of their lives. Some churches do this. They try to take over control of other people's lives. In authentic community, each person is responsible for one's own life. You can't abdicate responsibility for your life. You can't blame others and you can't make excuses. Accountability is a tool and a gift we give each other so that we can realize the spiritual growth that we need to in terms of who we are personally. We could never know and do it by ourselves. So once again, I'm like, kind of like Morpheus talking to Neo here in the Matrix. Now, you can take the blue pill, and you can go back to living your life 
And you can live and believe anything you want about yourself, about the world, about God. But if you take the red pill, I will show you the depth of truth. And as Jesus said, if you know the truth, it will set you free. But you will know the truth and it will make you accountable. The main truth I offer today is that you cannot really know the truth about somebody else unless you love them. This could be family members, friends, enemies as well. Like Morpheus says, all I offer you is the truth, nothing more. Let's pray.